Below the flight deck of an aircraft carrier is an invisible world where thousands of people are working, the hangar. Many crew members must spend weeks there without seeing the sun. It's an impressive world with a lot going on. An aircraft carrier is a warship that functions as a seagoing airbase and is outfitted with a full-length flight deck and facilities for transporting, arming, deploying, and retrieving aircraft. The ship needs to be able to accommodate its whole complement of aircraft, which means it needs space for launching, storing, and servicing those aircraft. The hangar is one portion that fulfills these requirements. How is life in an aircraft carrier hangar in the middle of the ocean? The hangar on an aircraft carrier is a huge special room under the flight deck where maintenance work is performed and an aircraft is brought in and out by an elevator. It doesn't matter how large the ship is, it must be able to accommodate its whole complement of aircraft and provide adequate space for launching, storing, and repairing those aircraft. Space is also required for the large crew, supplies like food, munitions, fuel, engineering parts, and propulsion. The hangar is used not only for stowing and servicing aircraft, but also as a space in which aircraft can be warmed up before taking flight and access is provided to other areas of the ship. The flight deck is located at the very top of the carrier and is the area where the aircraft is launched and recovered. The island, which houses the funnel, the air traffic control center and the bridge, can be found on the starboard side of this structure. A flight deck significantly impacts the role that a given carrier can perform since they determine the maximum allowable weight, variety and arrangement of aircraft that can be launched. The flight deck crew can keep a limited number of aircraft up top because there's not nearly enough room for the 80 to 100 aircraft stationed on a typical carrier. The majority of the aircraft are kept safe in the hangar bay, sometimes known as the carrier's garage when they're not being used. The hangar bay is two decks below the flight deck and right below the galley deck. More than two-thirds of the whole length of the ship is encompassed by the bay. With its four zones which are separated by sliding doors, it can store more than 60 aircraft and spare jet engines, fuel tanks and other forms of heavy equipment. The height of the hangar is three decks, and on either side of it are various single-deck compartments. In addition, four enormous elevators are located all around the hangar. These elevators are used to transport aircraft between the hangar and the flight deck. The two high-speed hydraulic elevators made of aluminum are large enough and powerful enough to lift two fighter jets weighing 34,000 kilograms each. The Aircraft Intermediate Maintenance Division, or AIMD, shops are located at the stern of the ship after the hangar bay. To ensure that the flight squadron is always operating at maximum capacity, the individuals working in these shops continually assess and improve the aircraft equipment in their care. At the very end of the ship, the Aircraft Intermediate Maintenance Division shops, leading to an open-air engine testing facility on the fantail of the ship. This is the only location on the ship where the maintenance staff can safely blast the aircraft's jet engines to ensure that they're functioning properly. Traditional line hangars have one primary function, which is to safely and securely house the aircraft. They're not designed to be roomy or comfortable. Rather, their purpose is to store an aircraft. However, an aircraft carrier hangar is a pretty different kind of structure from a line or storage hangar. The purpose of an aircraft carrier hangar is not only to temporarily store aircraft when they're not in operation, but an area of the aircraft carrier where repairs and upkeep are performed. Hangars on aircraft carriers are huge, open-air arenas that house maintenance facilities and are used exclusively to do major repairs on aircraft. This raises the issue, what exactly is considered to be a major repair? Any work that needs the removal and installation of power plants and associated accessories, as well as important structural and airframe components, is considered a major repair. It also encompasses overhaul, which is precisely what it sounds like. Overhaul involves repairing significant structural components such as landing gear, flight controls, rigging and system repairs. Building an aircraft is an expensive endeavor. A sizable portion of this cost is allocated to building the hangar where the aircraft will be stored. They serve as the primary storage location for all of the accompanying maintenance stands, scaffolding, tools, test stands, and even component overhaul backstops, 
This is a level of maintenance known as a base level maintenance in contrast to line maintenance, changing tires and brakes, making minor repairs to dents and skin, etc., often known as the general servicing and inspection on aircraft. The hangers on aircraft carriers need to be arranged in such a way that all of the necessary support equipment is quickly accessible, moored and stowed away for use. These are unique attributes that the traditional storage hangar does not necessitate. The United States Navy possesses 11 enormous nuclear-powered fleet carriers, making them the largest carriers in the world. Each carrier can carry approximately 80 fighter aircraft. The United States and the United Kingdom design their aircraft carriers in fundamentally different ways, and these differences significantly impact the ship's capabilities. The British norm is to construct the hangar as an integral element of the ship's primary framework and to restrict the hangar to space for stowing and servicing aircraft where necessarily serious fire risks exist. While it is a common practice in the United States to construct the hangar as a superstructure with wide open sides, on a carrier, one of the most important tasks is to ensure that the required number of aircraft are delivered to their objective as rapidly as is humanly possible. The best way to accomplish this is to convert the flight deck into the primary parking area. However, in addition to this, the aircraft in the hangar must be capable of flight practically immediately after leaving the lift. This means the aircraft should arrive at the flight deck with their engines already warming up. This is the justification for having the hangar with open sides. The British only built their carriers so the flight deck could be used as the primary parking space and that is why they choose to go with a closed hangar. However, with the invention of the oil immersion heater, aircraft in British carriers are now able to take off five minutes after reaching the flight deck, and it's understood that they can take off immediately in the event of an emergency. It does not require a great stretch of the imagination to regard the hangar of an aircraft carrier as a space equivalent to one in a battleship, where the magazine, shell room, and gun house of the main armament are all embodied. The protection of such a space is a requirement. The hangar is susceptible to airplane damage in the form of splinters, bombs, blasts, and even gunfire. In this respect, it should be kept in mind that projectiles from aircraft may not in the future have trajectories with a small angle of the vertical. Hence, the hangar is one part of an aircraft carrier that needs to be protected. The effect of a bomb blast will be less severe in a hangar with open sides than a hangar with closed sides but there is a greater chance of an explosion occurring in the hangar if the sides of the hangar are open. That'll be all for today's video. Thanks for staying tuned. Let us know what you think of this topic in the comments. Please don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can always get to watch more amazing videos like this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.